guys, welcome back to the channel, and we're going to look at the final team member for the Weijiang oversized KO of the Toy World Throttlebots, and that being this guy, Goldbug, although he was actually given the alternate name of Reaver. Not that anybody else on his team was given an alternate name, but nevertheless, this KO of Goldbug is going to be our focus this time around in the latest Got Back True review. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your humble host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, that's right, man, hit that notification bell, at least for as long as you can. I mean, we know all these features are going away because of uneducated morons, um, but, like, it, you know, do it for as long as you can. We're a community, you know, for as long as we're able to be a, an adult collector community. So foolish to even talk about. Anyway, let's move on and have some fun here. Uh, check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, Transformers, Collectors, and L, the Autobot family, and have a look for me. More important than ever now to do this, have a look for me everywhere across social media so that we can still interact and still be our thriving community. This is the Weijiang knockoff of Goldbug. He is actually named Reaver on his instructions. It's so weird. Even the instructions for all these, like, don't match. Like, it's so strange. Um, but nevertheless, I think we all know that it's Toy World's iteration of Goldbug, you know, upsized. And he's in his backpack mode now because, honestly, it's very in-between. Like, the car mode is great. The robot mode is great. This is one of those modes that he needs it for being able to combine with his other five. He just forms a backpack. Like, he really almost doesn't need to be there. But he is. And it's not easier to get to this from car mode. It's not easier to get to this from robot mode. This is pretty much right in the middle. So what we're going to do as we assess this guy is we're going to start him out in vehicle mode. We're going to go to this mode. And then I'm going to take him kind of back part way uh, to where... The transformation for this and the transformation the rest of the way to robot mode diverge. Like, they're kind of the same thing to start off, but then they do diverge. You'll see what I mean um, when we go through. He makes a great vehicle, makes a fine backpack, and he makes an excellent robot. But don't take my word for it. Let's head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. I wish that I could say that I'm really looking forward to this one, but, like, now that I'm here, man, I'm kind of not. And it's not because he's bad. He's not. He's an excellent figure, actually. It's not even because technically he's Bumblebee. Because for some reason, I don't have the disdain for Goldbug that I have for Bumblebee. I don't know. Goldbug hasn't been thrown in my face as much over the years, I suppose. Now, obviously, this is somewhat stylized. It does have a Bug-esque type of nature to it, but it also has like a Porsche-esque type of nature to it. He does not have an Autobot symbol up top. Of course, he has a black roof instead of a gold roof. But, like, you get the idea. It sort of fits the mold. I do like the nicely painted rims and tail lights. Honestly, we've had nice paint on all of the members of this set. Again, this guy seems to be branded a little bit differently, yet again, compared to, like, his um, other, I don't want to say, you know, uh, brothers, but like his other teammates. There you go. There's the word I was looking for. Teammates. I knew I was stumbling there for a little bit. So he becomes actually the like backpack for the combined mode because we've already seen the torso being wide load and we've seen the two legs and the two arms. This guy kind of becomes a backpack and it's tricky to do all of his transformation, not because it's bad, but because it's genius. If that makes any sense to you. Like it's sort of brilliant, but that doesn't mean that it's easy by any stretch of the imagination. I guess the best way to probably do this is, I guess I'll try and show his backpack mode first, and then I'll try and show his robot mode. Now, to be fair, um, before we go on here, I do want to point out that he does come with a blaster. No sword this time, I don't think. Uh, and it, can peg under here to become an exhaust. I love that. I think that's, I think that's really neat. I love that sort of storage. It's clever. Uh, you don't see clever storage like that very often anymore. So I really appreciate it when I do see it. In order to do the conversion for this guy, we need to begin by picking off 
the back end section here of the roof. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, that can't be too bad. It is because everything tabs in so incredibly tight on this guy that it makes all of this so hard. Oh, my goodness gracious. And you can see there, I'm starting to like pick it all up there. Ooh, that was the easiest time I ever had getting that off. It, it, the tolerances are snug, they're tight, uh, they're perfect, but trying to kind of get your fingernail in somewhere to start moving pieces is the challenge with this guy. So we take this and we're gonna turn it around that way. And then we need to kind of pick up the whole, I guess front section we'll say, of this guy being his like hood and front of the roof here. There, there. Pick up the, the front section of this guy and then this whole thing is on a blue armature that folds up over like that. And we pick all of that up. Then you can split the legs there and Really what you're looking to do now is sort of expand the legs like there you can see that they're sort of folded up in here You're looking to expand the legs out, but that does mean being able to untab the door here, which again is a little bit of a chore I'm gonna get the legs out and Get this sort of turn in the orientation that it needs to be because it is a bit of a nuisance to get things untabbed And that's really all that you're missing Okay, so once we have the legs extended, we turn him around at the waist. Keep in mind that when you turn at the waist, the kind of uh, front half of the roof and the hood will want to turn with you, so you need to sort of really hold on to that and just turn like from the pelvis down. Once you have this turned around and extended out all nice like this, uh, basically you need to fold in the uh, window section, so you fold this out on the side, fold in the window section, and then the whole thing is gonna come around really to the back of the leg. And come around to the back of the leg, we'll come over here, and you'll see this blue armature back here. Uh, the whole thing comes to the back of the leg and the foot extends up. So the foot will extend up, and the foot will extend up like that. This will come around to the back of the leg on that blue hinge, and then it slides down. There's a slider in here, um, a little metal pin really, and that comes all the way around. Uh, you might see, maybe I can show it on this side, maybe. You might see a metal pin in here. That metal pin is what slides down on the blue. So we take this blue section out, and you can see the pin here now for sure, right here and we slide the like leg piece down on that pin and we bring it all the way around on the back. For the record, in terms of robot mode, that's the lower body done. Now that we have that done, I'm gonna back things up a little bit just so we can get kind of reoriented with what we're trying to accomplish here now. And here's where things get kind of interesting. We're gonna take this guy and we turn him to the side. Now, what we wanna do is bend the legs down and bend this leg down. It looks like you're kind of bending his knees in almost like the wrong direction from what you would kind of think you would need to turn them. Then, once we have them down, we bring it out to the side. Once we have the other one down, we also bring it out to the side. So this piece now is not all the way over yet. I need to fix this piece before we go on. And once we have that done, um, basically I just had to line things up so that it kind of like notched in here properly. Once we have that done, the kneecaps, which were pulled out a long time ago, or they should have been, can go pushed in. We pushed this kneecap in already. This one, it goes pushed in as well. We kind of 
begin to collapse the legs a little bit, it holds it securely in position. We're going to, when we attach, we're going to use this peg hole and this peg right here, and this whole thing is going to be turned around so that it's like this. In fact, because it's a backpack, it's going to be turned around so that it's like this. This whole piece will come up and forward, and then this piece that we turned around out of the way earlier will come in. All of it collapsed, and this, in the end, is going to be our backpack piece. Now, that being said, we did sort of have this guy in robot mode. Well, it kind of started to have him in robot mode because we had the legs done and extended and down. So, I'm just going to get back to that step and then we'll go on with the rest of the robot mode transformation from there. Okay, so remember when we had the cut before, after I extended the le Okay, so the last time we were in this position, it was kind of just after a cut where I extended the legs and I turned him at the waist. And I kind of left it there and said that his lower body was really done. Well, that's only partially true because he's not super stable here at the moment. There's still a couple of little things to do to get him in robot mode from here. What have we done so far? All we've done so far really is we lifted up the rear section of the roof and turned it around and then we picked off the front section of the roof and the hood. We use this blue hinge in here to lift the hood up over the front section of the roof and that's all we've really got done so far. Then we extended the legs and rotated them at the waist. Now, we can now bring forward the knee hinge and even bring up the kneecap if you want. Instead of having the knee hinge left back in here, we can rotate it forward and if you want you can bring up the kneecap. That will give us a greater range of motion for the knees going forward, which is exactly something we want. Also, if we come down here underneath, there's black sections here we can flip out and flip out. They give this guy a very nice, solid, steady heel spur. I love it, man. I dig it. Love it. Think that that is an excellent way to do the lower body on this guy. Now we get to the arms. And the arms are weird for this guy. I'll, I'll show it the best that I can, but the arms are really, really weird for this guy. We'll see, we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. So, the way the arms are is they're all sort of folded up in here in a very peculiar, odd fashion. We want to sort of bring that down and sort of untab and bring that down. Once we have that down, we have these gold squares in right here. Those gold squares are shoulders. So we need to come here and pick off the fender and come over here and pick off the rear fender and they will fold on the back. That now gives us clearance to take out this entire ball joint section that has that arm on it. Same over here, take it out, that has that arm on it. Beautiful. You can even straighten those up and rotate it down. And same over here, straighten it up and rotate it down. Okay. Things looking good so far, man. Things are looking good so far. Then we got to deal with the actual unfurling of the arm. And we begin by folding out the hand and folding out the hand. We can straighten down the arm if you haven't already done so, and straighten down the arm. Then, the... How is it? The tire? I'm trying to recall this now, and it's not easy. Honestly, it's not easy to remember how this is done. The tire rotates down into, the tire rotates down to position, and when the tire rotates down to position, it folds in around the, like, forearm section. So, see if I can, see if I can kind of figure this out for you. Now that this is out, if you love me, you're going to pardon that cut. Okay, so I already did this arm over here, and what I did is, it took me a minute to kind of remember it, is I rotated at the bicep, swivel up here. Then, with the hand in the right orientation, I brought forward uh, this whole section here. There's a, a hinge here, so you kind of back up the 
this piece here and you'll notice you have a little peg here and a little peg here that goes into those forearm sections. Then we come to this tire and this tire will now rotate to the back of the arm. It folds down so that it fits snugly in there. Turn this so that the tire is on the inside of the arm like that. It's a lot of twisting and turning but you'll see two teeth here that should tab in there and then as you turn the tire you'll kind of be able to feel how to rotate it to fit in to become part of the forearm. Okay now the whole kind of head section here and sort of the sort of the kind of rest of, rest of this guy. Um, man, it's, I don't like this conversion not because it's poorly done it's not poorly done but just because it's not it's not very easy so we bring that section forward and I should be able to maybe get that out of the way should be able to get his head up. Now just to show how this works, earlier I put these rear fender pieces behind so we could get the shoulders out. Now you need to kind of get the shoulders out of the way to get these fender pieces back out so you can get this center piece which is really the uh, trunk flip back. The head is in here and you just flip the head up and then you close the trunk section back in and once you have the trunk section closed back in now you can flip these fender pieces back and around as well. And after what's been an almost ungodly series of cuts we're finally to the point where we are just about done. Now if you will remember earlier when I talked about this guy becoming a backpack and just get those out of the way I said that when you start to turn the waist that the uh, entire kind of like hood and roof will want to come with you. Don't have it come with you. However, this time around you do want it all to come with you. So you're going to turn the lower body back around and now you're going to turn the whole thing around. And now this will come up over the front, this will come up over right there and it all kind of slots in there sort of nice. We bring the arms down and hold on that piece does like to be a nuisance and indeed once we collapse this blue hinge all the way in and squeeze everything together it stays in place. I know it looked like the front panel his hood was uh, flopping down but honestly like it does once you get it all locked in it does not flop in the least and boom here we have Goldbug who looks nothing like his Bumblebee counterpart, this of course being the Titans Return Bumblebee. And Goldbug here is gold and blue, just as, as he should be. However, there's more blue on his body than there should be. All of that should be gold. The biceps, the hands, the abdomen, the pelvis, the thighs, all of that should be gold. And uh, really, this shouldn't be the hood, it should be the roof. But I kind of like the hood look fine because it kind of is still in keeping with the character so I dig it. Uh, naturally there should be an Autobot symbol right probably there. Uh, the head is very Goldbug-esque. I think you'll know that this is Goldbug no problem. I'm gonna say it's a solid nine. The transformation, well you saw how many cuts we did and how many many kind of twists in the road there were along the way. I'm gonna say that I'm not a fan of this transformation because of its complexity though there are genius aspects. So as a fan, I'm saying it's only about a, a six. As like an engineering mindset, I'm going to say it's more like a nine. So I'm going to split the difference. I'm going to say that the transformation is actually about an eight. Uh, so so far it's getting an eight and a half. What about the articulation? The articulation is pretty great. We have a head that can go left and right, up and down. Uh, the shoulders, they can go all the way around. We have a, a bicep swivel, we have a super deep um, elbow because of an elbow and a hinge up here by the bicep swivel. We do not have any hand rotation but we do have a bit of in and out movement. We obviously have a waist, actually we have a waist and then we have a pelvis 
swivel, so it's like a double waist swivel. We have the arms able to go all the way out. We have legs that can go all the way out to the side, all the way forward and all the way back. Um, if you bring that knee forward, you can get almost 90 degrees. Not quite, but almost. Um, you certainly don't notice that it's not 90 degrees. Let me put it to you that way. Uh, we do have an ankle tilt, but it's not super free flowing, so to speak. We do have a heel spur that can move. We have toes that can move. We have a thigh swivel, if I didn't say that already. Um, he has pretty much everything you'd want him to have. He was getting an eight and a half. I'm going to say that his articulation is still about an eight and a half. Overall, this guy is an eight and a half. How is he as a backpack? I don't know, he's all right. He's a backpack, I guess. But as a gold bug, he's a pretty fantastic gold bug. Man, I've said for years that I'm not a Bumblebee fan, and I'm not a Bumblebee fan. But I don't seem to have the same disdain for gold bug for some reason. I don't know, maybe because this look hasn't been pushed in my face over and over and over and over and over more than in almost any character in the history of fiction. Um, and I stand by that. Goldbug is a nice mix of gold and black. Yes, this is somewhat stylized indeed, but when you look at the head sculpt, it's so quintessentially Goldbug that I think you can pretty easily know who they're intending for this guy to be, even though his chest is his hood rather than being the roof of the vehicle, as it should be. And there is more blue here in his body than there should be. It should all be uh, gold, to be accurate. But I, I get it. I totally get it. Um, this is definitely... I think, scale-wise, meant to probably match the size of a masterpiece display, even though the aesthetic really doesn't. As a robot, he's fantastic. Excellent articulation. All the joints are smooth, but yet tight. They're fantastic. As a car, he looks sleek. It's really good. The conversion is a bit of a bear at times. Getting to this backpack is not a nuisance, but you just have to know how things are moving. and. You really have to differentiate, the key to doing the transformation for this guy is differentiating between a pelvis rotation and a full waist rotation. And that's your big thing. Uh, things tab in and lock in super duper tight here. So much so that sometimes it's a little bit of a nuisance to deal with. The way the arms are is brilliant, but you really sort of have to think about what you're doing with them. I'm sure the more you do it, the more you should get to it. And it's been a while since I did it. I like him. He's definitely one of the strongest members, even though when it comes to combine mode, he's probably one of the most unnecessary. Still, he's one of my favorite throttle bots. Let me know what you think about this guy. You know I love to hear from you guys. And I know I, I keep saying this that you're only gonna let me know you're only going to be able to let me know what you think of this guy like for a very limited time. But hey man, do it while you can, I guess. Do it while you can. Um I love to hear from you. And you know what? Even if you can't comment, like if you're watching this after all this nonsense happens and you can't comment, like find me out, man, on social media. Like let me know what you think about this guy. I'm kicking around everywhere. You know, I love to hear from you guys. I appreciate you dropping by. Give me some of your very valuable time, more important than ever now. Please hit that subscribe button. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, there is a donate link, also vastly important now. Uh, what else can I say? You know? I'm glad that you're here. I am. I'm glad that you're here. And uh, you need to know that somehow, some way, each and every day, you do very much make a difference. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together, hopefully, hopefully, on at the live show, hopefully, at the stop motion premieres, if I can even do premieres anymore. Probably can't. Uh, and right here, the old fashioned way, man, inside the videos.